welcome you to this very tutorial. I hope it will be of benefit to you where you are. And uh, I'll be talking about uh, Microsoft Word. I intend to do playlists, more videos about Microsoft Word that will be beneficial to beginners, intermediate, and also advanced. So let us start. Um, how do I open uh, Microsoft Word? Take an example. I may come over here and search for Word. You can see I'm having Word uh, 2016. If I click on it, you can see it's coming. That's one way. To check also whether you have it, uh, you may come over here on Windows key, and then you can see the applications we are having here are represented by letters. Like under letter A, we are having um, access, we are having letter C, we are having letter D. So if I try to be patient and scroll down until I reach on, on W, you can see I'm having word 2016. But 2016 is not only a number, it specifies a version you're having. And that version you're having, it should be a version of Microsoft Office. Take an example, if I do a Windows key plus R on my keyboard, and then I type control, that's a shortcut for going to the control panel, and then I navigate to install a program. You can see these are the applications that I'm having that I already installed in my computer. And you can see I'm having something like Microsoft Office uh, Professional Plus 2016. That means it's the version of Office that I have in my computer. So we do have available different versions of Office. Take an example. We have 2010 version. We have 2013. We have 2016. We have 2019. And the current version is the one we call 365. So now, without wasting time, another way to open Microsoft Word is to search you, uh, Microsoft Word, you right click, you go to open file location. You can see over here, I'm having uh, Word 2016. If I right click and I copy this, I close over here and then I paste, only that I'm having it on my desktop. You can see now I'm pasting the shortcut on my desktop. So whenever now I want to open it, I'll be double clicking on this and then it will be opening more easier without searching for Microsoft Word from the search bar. That said and done, what we have here in the blue color, where my mouse uh, is hovering over, these are the files or the documents that I've been working on recently. The recent files should appear over here on the left-hand side. And then we are having something like business, card flyers, letters, education, and, and what have you. All of these are categories for what we call templates. Templates, take an example, like this one that I'm having here, is a template for CV. If I want to design my own CV to be able to request a certain job from a certain company, I'll double click on this, and then you can see they are giving me a layout where I can start and be able to modify the information and suit my need. This is what we call now a CV template. So you don't need to write a CV from scratch. Instead, you double click on a certain template and then you modify it. That's one way. If I'm to go back, I would click on file, go to new, and then you can see over here we are having something like a blank document. I'm not going to explain all of these templates because there are very many. You can see if I scroll down, there are very many. So if, if I hover over on the blank document, a blank document is a document uh, that we are going to open and it's going to be empty inside. We are going to start from scratch. You're having nothing inside. That means whatever you're going to write, let it be a letter or a CV, you start from zero. That's what we call a blank document. So when we are dealing with Microsoft Word, we associate with the word called document. When we are dealing with PowerPoint, we associate with the word called a presentation. When we are dealing with Excel or spreadsheet, then we associate it with the word that we can call a workbook or a worksheet. Those two words commonly come when we are dealing with Excel. Now let me click on blank document. If I click on blank document, by default, this is a name that comes. You can see because we had another document, it was named document one by default. This one is coming as document two. Now, let me try to close this one so that I can remain with this one for elaborating. So the name now by default is document two. So if you want, you can change it and we shall see how we can change that. So then we are having a space over here. This space is what we call quick access toolbar. Quick access toolbar is a space that you're given where you can pin a certain feature that you commonly use and then you're able to access that very certain feature. And then we are having something like file, home, insert, design, up to view. All of these, we call them tabs. And then once I click on one tab, the section that appears with all of these features is what we call a ribbon section. 
maybe you will allow me to use sniping tool so that I can capture and then show you the, the spaces that I'm talking about and you will be able to at least differentiate what I'm talking about. So the, the whole of this space over here that I'm indicating in a blue color is what we call quick access toolbar. Let me write it here. Quick access toolbar. It's written like this. And then maybe let me try to use another pen over here, maybe the red one. And then I show you what we call tabs. Tabs are these ones now. I'm trying to make sure that I, I circle all of the tabs. These ones that are indicated in the red color, like file, like home, like insert, design, up to view. So whenever you click on one tab, take an example home, there is a section that appears down. Maybe let me try to use another color, let's say black. The whole of this section that I'm indicating in a black color, this one over here, we call it a ribbon section. Ribbon like this. So you may call it ribbon or ribbon. It depends. And then we are saying this one in blue color is what we call tabs. So now you can understand well the interface. That's said and done. Each tab has unique features compared to the other tab. And those features are grouped in what we call groupings or groups. Take an example. You can see we are having clipboard, we are having font, we are having paragraph, we are having style, and then we are having editing. These ones we call them groupings. Like font, like all of these, we call them groupings. Groupings or groups, they gather features into groups, as their name suggests. So that said and done, what if now we feel like we want to add a certain tab and then we pin in our features so that we can access them more easier? How do we do that? Let's look at that. If I come on file and then I navigate to options and then I navigate to customize ribbon, you can see this, these are the features that we usually have in our, our ribbon section. Let me try maybe to capture them. The whole of these are the features that usually appear in our ribbon section. Then these ones over here, if I'm to change maybe the color, these ones over here are the tabs that usually appear on top, the ones we are talking about. So if I want to create my own tab from, uh, from the rest of the tabs that I had on top, I would just come over here, down, I click on new tab. Once I click on new tab, you can see we are having something like new tab custom and new group custom. So now we understand what a tab is and what a group is. So I will click. I will just click on a tab and then rename my tab. Maybe I want to call it tutorial. I call it tutorial and then I click OK. So you can see it gets a name tutorial. So, so far, let me not change anything on the group. And then I will just come over here and then click on OK. So if, I, if I'm to go back, you can see I'm having a tab called tutorial, but inside there is no feature pinned in our very tab that we created. So now the second stage will be to pin in some features so that our tab can have the features that we commonly use. The role of creating a tab is simple, is to save time. You try to see features you commonly use, you group them in your created tab so that you can access them more easier. Let's try to go back, I click on file, I go to the option, customize ribbon. Now I'm going to click on new group under the tab that we created, which is tutorial. And then maybe these are the features that we commonly use. Suppose I commonly use copy. Instead of searching copy again and again, I may click on copy. I say add. You can see copy is coming. I add another one, maybe delete. I click add. So after adding all of those features that I commonly use, I can now come over here and click on OK. So once I go back now, you can see under tutorial, I'm having two features that I've added. So that's how we add more features in our created tab. Now, over here at the bottom, if you see well, you can see that we're having something like page and then words. The whole of this blue color, we call it a status bar. Status bar is where you're having page number. They indicate the page where you are. They indicate the page numbers you're having. They indicate some words you're having in your document. Then over here, these ones over here, these three icons represent what we call view modes. View modes is how you can change the layout of your certain document. And then this one over here is what we call a Zumba. A Zumba, it can reduce or increase your workspace. This paper over here, you can reduce it or increase it using uh, 
this very feature that we call a Zumba. So since we intend to create more playlists, let me stop from here. I'll be recording more videos enlightening you about Microsoft Word. Have a good day. I'm Isaac Tumene. See you later.